Hi, welcome to Verbling. Now we're going to talk about uh, what I think is a pretty cool topic, which is who should control the economy. I really wanted to do a debate class on this because I anticipate there being some differences in opinion, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you all think about this. This should be some good advanced speaking practice for you to really stretch your vocabulary and try to get into some more abstract concepts. I like to teach advanced classes because I'm overall extremely impressed with the level, with the English level of verbling students, and I want to give you all opportunities to really expand the way you express yourselves in English. And so today's class is about, like I said, who, who controls the economy with respect to um, public versus private industry. And when I'm saying public industry, I'm talking about stuff that's run by the government. So when you think public, think government. And then when you think private, think companies. So the public stuff is run by the government, and private stuff is run by companies or corporations. And what I want to talk about today is how much of the economy should be run and controlled by the government and how much of the economy should be controlled by private corporations. I want to talk about pros and cons of each of those. And I want to talk about what you all think is the best solution. So what we're looking at today is two extremes. You can have a, a country or a place where the entire economy is controlled by the government. This is what we call a centrally planned economy. So if the government runs all of the commerce, when the government is in charge of all of the businesses, um, that, that is a government-controlled or centrally planned economy. The other extreme is a perfect capitalist economy. In a perfect capitalist economy, private industry controls everything. So companies and corporations are in charge of everything. And both of these extremes have problems with them. And that's what I want to talk about first. And then I want to talk about some intermediate solutions that we can discuss and try to figure out what's really the best way to run a country in terms of who controls businesses and who controls the economy. So the government deals with a lot of things on a day-to-day -day basis in every country. But today I really want to focus on business, commerce, and the economy and how you think the government should control those things. So before we get into the, the advanced debate and the concepts, I'd like to do introductions as usual. Um, I know both, I mean I know, I know most of you um, and there's a couple I don't. So um, I'm happy to have back a lot of returning students for this. I think it'll be really interesting. For those of you who are watching the class and could not get in, um, please watch the live video feed because I still think it will be really informative. Feel free to participate in the written verbaling classes chat and also you can view this class on YouTube afterwards. Um, as well, if any spots open up during the class, you'll see a join class button that you can use to join us. So for those of you who are here, let's do those introductions. Um, I would like to hear your your name, what country you're in, and I want to know, in your country, um, what, is, what is the type of government? Um, so is your, is your country a republic, a democracy? Um, is your country ruled by maybe some sort of, um, some sort of like, like a, you know, a more, of a, more of an authoritative figure, a, authoritarian figure, like like a king or something, you know, something like that. Um, what, what, is, what is your form of government in your country? And just, just generally. Um, so your name, country, and the, the form of government there. And um, so we'll start with, um, with Christophe. And Christophe, you're, you're from France. Yeah. Um, and so how, how do you classify the, the government in France? Uh, hi, Libyakin. Hi, everyone. I'm Christophe. I'm from the... United States of uh, France. <laughs> so France, it's, uh, I'm just kidding. France, it's a uh, republic. Uh, um, it's a republic, and uh, uh, the the system is, here is a democratic. Uh, 
is uh, it's based on the democratic. Uh, so, and the government now it's from the left. So we have both the uh, uh, two sides, the right and the left. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so the I've 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 studied the, the political system in France a little bit because I live here and it's it's very it's very similar to the system of the U.S. It's a, it's a representative. Uh, it's representative democracy, and France, there's a little bit more political parties than in the U.S. In the U.S., we only have two, really, but in France, there's there's a few. Um, yeah, yeah, and now that now it's controlled by the the left. Um, yeah, that's right. And uh, but uh, the most uh, the most bigger uh, parties are the left and the right. They are classified by the left and the right, and the uh, there is a small party, as you said, but uh, they are not the majority. There is uh, like a Le Pen. They are the considered like the the very extreme uh, uh, right. So. Yeah, you, you mean yeah, yeah. The, the Front National. The Front National. Is the, yeah, they're the they're the extreme right party. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, thanks. Um, so, Igor, what is what is the uh, what's the government like in Moldova? It's a republic, obviously. It's a uh, democracy and it's parliamentary, it's type of uh, parliamentary uh, president, presidential uh, democracy. So uh, uh, the power is in parliament and uh, in uh, president hands. And who chooses the parliament? Uh, people uh, from our okay, country. Okay, so they're, they're directly elected by the people. Uh, yes, and parliament uh, chooses the president. Oh, okay, interesting. interesting. At the moment, but um, uh, uh, five years ago or ten years ago, uh, was that people uh, choose uh, president directly, like the parliament? Uh, and why why did they change it? Because uh, they said the politicians said that uh, our country is small and we do not need uh, two elections. It's, too much, and if we choose uh, parliament, parliament represent us people, so they can choose uh, president based on our, our how to say our your, your wishes. Your yes, our yeah. wishes. Mm -hmm. All right, interesting, cool. Thank you. Um, next is Luis. Um, hi, okay. Uh, I'm from uh, Chile, South America. Um, and here uh, in in seven in the seventies, uh, there was a di dictator, dictator, uh, a dictator. Of, uh, it was from thirty uh, seven th uh, seventy three to eighty five. Uh, this man dictates, and uh, he killed a lot of people here in Chile because they didn't thought uh, as a, as he thought. And it was it was a very sad uh, uh, history in the in this country, but then uh, it started to, to develop the democracy. And, and in those days, uh, it in the, uh, Chile has been a lot of improvements in democracy and uh, human rights. Uh, but uh, uh, the thing is that um, here you can uh, be like uh, a secure uh, country. You can feel a secure country because. Uh, we have uh, Peru, Colombia, Ecuador near, and there are places that it, uh, you can you cannot feel secure. Uh, politicals uh, are like in all the places I think. Um, some are not good, some are bad, but uh, democracy have uh, has uh, has made a good job here in Chile. I think in in the structure, not in education, but uh, I think we're like. Um, uh, 50 50 uh, on that part. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's really interesting. Thanks. Yeah. Um, cool. Next is uh, Furkan. Yes. My name is Furkan. I'm from Turkey. And in my country, it is democracy and it's running my republic. And we have the same president since 2002. Um, uh, <laughs> But this, uh, after this election, uh, after this term, probably the prime minister will leave his job uh, to a new person because of the rules or legislations of his party. And also, there's a 
I don't know what exactly the definition in English, but there's a president also. But in Turkey, prime minister is more important than the other figures. Okay, cool. All right. Um, thank you. And uh, Nabor Alejandro? Hello, hello everyone. Hello. Uh, well, my name is Alejandro. I'm from Colombia. Uh, we have a president here, so we have a democracy. Everybody choose the president, the people. And uh, well, uh, the president uh, has four years uh, in, in its in its seat, but the last one were spoke about election. It was. Eight years, and well, that's all. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, great. And then, and then next is Omar. Hello, my name is Omar. Uh, when it comes for the policy in my country, it is divided into several uh, federal states. So that when it comes for election, each present, uh, each uh, there are some candidates who are uh, candidates who who are who give get the nomination from the people to from each state they come from, and so they have some seat in the parliament, and there are those seat for the part uh, for the party people. And then the seat uh, plays a good role when it comes for choosing the president. The people choose uh, the, uh, the each each party and each uh, each party in my country give uh, his or her uh, nominate and offer them for the people, and the people choose. So I believe it's democracy here. Okay, great. And remind me what what country you're from again? Uh, Tur Turkey. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. Um, cool. So next is Rafael. Hello, I'm Rafael. I'm from Spain, from the capital of Spain in Europe, Madrid. Um, we have a monarchy, democrat democratic monarchy. We have a parliament elected by by the people, and the legis legislature um, change every every four years. And we have two parties, big parties, and the national parties, one in one right hand and another in the left hand, socialist. And now the government is from the right hand. All right, great, thanks. Um, okay, and next is, is it Unai? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, could you tell us about what country you're from and what the government is like there? Yes, I am Unai and I am from Spain as well. Um, I can't add more than my partner says, said. But I think my country is managed by the banks, not by the political, because here is all a disaster. And I don't know. Now we have a lot of problems with politicians. The king and his family still as money, so it's all a disaster. Okay, interesting. Good. So yeah, so we'll we'll discuss more about that later. Thank you for bringing that up. And then the last person is Wolf. Are you here, Wolf? Hello. All right, I can hear you now. Yeah. Uh, what was the question? Uh, so, what country you're from, and what form of government it is? South Africa, run by democracy. Sorry, I, di I didn't get that. What did you say? South Africa, run by democracy. Okay. Cool. Um, all right, that's everyone. So, thank you all for introducing yourselves. And now we're going to get a little bit into um, the the debate for the day. Um, so it seems like generally pretty much all of us uh, come from pretty standard democracies. Um, the people have some role in electing either representatives who elect a leader or electing representatives and a leader. And so uh, we mostly, I think all of us come from countries where we 
are able to be represented in government. Um, so, so that's that's good. But you know, we all, we all have our, our freedom to participate in government and stuff like that. Um, but I think so. I think this question is is pretty relevant, which is once you have that government, how should they deal with the economy? And when and I I, I don't really study economics. I haven't studied it extensively. I'm I'm not an expert on this. But I think it's an interesting theoretical debate, even for those of us who have not really studied very much economics. So uh, the question I have for all of you today is, what is the government's job in controlling the economy, in controlling business and commerce in the country? And as I was saying, as we were all joining the class, there are two extremes. There's one extreme, which is the government controls everything. So that's what we call a centrally planned economy. And in a centrally planned economy, the government owns the means of production. The government owns industry. Um, the other extreme is a, a corporate-run economy. That's a, an economy where the government doesn't do anything to regulate the economy. It's just private corporations doing what they do. So it's the, the economy is entirely private. So uh, in this discussion, when we're talking about government programs, we're talking about public stuff. Um, when we're talking about companies, we're talking about private. So, um, so first of all, let's talk about the extremes and the problems with each extreme, theoretically. And then I'm going to ask about your personal opinions about what's the best solution. So let's look at the first extreme, where the government controls the entire economy. Um, what are the advantages of that kind of a system? What are the advantages of that system? The good things about that system. Mm, uh, can I say? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Can I start? Okay. Um, I think uh, in most of the cases, um, uh, well, uh, I'm going to speak about here in Chile. Here in Chile, there's a lot of mining companies. They instruct Cooper. Um, and uh, there, there are like three or four uh, big mining that uh, there are from the forgiven, uh, forgiven, forgiven. I don't know how to say from the uh, uh, forgiven, forgiven. Um, as uh, there are uh, the owners are forgiven. Is that from Brazil, from Canada? Oh, um, oh, yeah, they're 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 yeah, they're foreign. They're from other countries. Or foreign there, yeah, yeah. foreign there. And and uh, uh, you know uh, Chile uh, earns a lot of money with Cooper. Uh, I've been in mining companies, and I don't know uh, they extract like uh, uh, some mineral that calls molybdeno. Molybdeno is the essence of, of the steel, and they extract like a hundred uh, ninety-eight percent of Cooper or ninety-five percent of Cooper and five percent of molybdeno. And with the molybdeno, they pay all the basic things in the mining. <laughs> it's like okay. so expensive that thing that with only the five percent of the molybdeno, uh, only the five percent that extract, uh, they pay uh, all the basic things in the mining. And the mining is a huge mine. And you know that that old percentage of, of, of money that they sell is going to four years instead of going to a country. I think that uh, when as a government, when the government uh, uh, will uh, need to have all the national researchers for the country, and not the for not the for for Guinness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For, uh, foreign people or foreigners, foreigners. Sorry, foreigners. Yeah, foreigners. Good. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. Good. Good point. Yeah, that's, that's, okay. That's uh. I don't know. That's for for government. <laughs> Good. So, so an advantage of a centrally planned government-run economy is that the go is that the government can make sure that money stays in the country. They can keep yeah. money within the country and make sure that it benefits the citizens of the country instead of going to foreign private corporations. Okay. What other advantages are there to us to a centrally planned economy? Excuse me. Uh, what What else? Why else is it good to have a centrally planned economy? Why is it good uh, for the government to run the economy? Yeah, because sometimes the the, the countries have debts, uh, international debts, and you know if if you have all your researches and all your your, your business uh, for you, you will uh, you will easily uh, pay your debts, 
and a country with debt is not good. And you know, uh, here's a lot of a lot of bad education. I think I lived in the United States since I was seven to ten. I lived in Queens and Brooklyn and Long Island, and I see the education there, and I, I I know that it's better there than here. Is because they uh, because there they 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 approach uh, approach uh, approach how do you say approach the national resources and and if you don't do that it's like uh, working working for someone else it's like who's the boss <laughs> no yeah good okay so that's that's yeah that's a great point is. When the government controls everything, it's easier to pay off the debt, put money into education. The government can choose the priorities. Um, yeah. this, is, this is really huge, is that it's a centrally planned economy is important because the government can choose how to spend the money, and they can choose to spend the money on what we call social services. And this is, this is huge, okay? If, if the government, it's the government's job to provide social services. And so it's important for the government to have money to pay for education, health care, and things like that. Um, okay, and uh, Huen, I noticed that you just joined, and you had typed in the uh, chat equality. Can you explain a little bit more about why equality is important with a centrally planned economy? Yeah, because my country once was in uh, a central plan, centrally planned economy, so uh, I kind of know it. So basically, uh, during that time, we worked together, and uh, of course, the government set goals for the whole economy. And uh, like, uh, yeah, we worked together, and you know, each month you're gonna have uh, an allotment of uh, rice, of uh, clothes, uh, and all other things, from bicycles to radios. Like if your if your neighbors have something, you're also supposed to have that, even though you may work uh, more effective than your neighbors. So that's the idea of equality. Good, thank you. And this is this is the most important point in this side of the discussion, and I'm really glad you brought it up. The point of the government controlling the economy is that they can then distribute resources among the people. And this is this was the original idea behind socialism is that it's important for everyone to share and to have equal resources. And so even if you work more than someone else or you know you, you make more money than someone else, that gets that can get redistributed by the government to make sure that people are more equal. So there's not really rich people and really poor people. Um, everyone's a little bit more equal so that you're less likely likely to have um, homeless people, you know, or uh, slums or things like that. And so that's, that's a, a big advantage of a centrally planned economy. Um, okay, what are the disadvantages of an economy like that? Why can it be negative or bad when the government controls everything? Bad quality of products, because uh, on the market uh, doesn't exist uh, uh, companies that, uh, and, con and uh, concurrency or... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a lack of competition. Yes, uh, that doesn't exist competition on the market, and that's why the quality of products it's not very uh, good. It's a low quality products and service. Good. So if the government is producing products and services, and there's no competition to produce better products and services, you might have lower quality products and services because there's only one. So if the government is manufacturing bicycles. There's only one kind, and you can only get that kind. And maybe you're going to have lower quality than if you had multiple companies competing to make a better product. Um, okay. I Good. want to add something. Yeah. It's not. It's not just about uh, the product qualities. It's also about the quantity. Because, like I said, uh, if I produce more than my neighbor, but I can, I only get paid just as equal as my neighbor, and I'm not going to have the incentive to produce more. So, um, gradually, the uh, economy will go into the uh, stagnation phase, I think. Good. Okay. Ex excellent. These are, this is exactly what I'm looking for here. So, so, if you know that you can work five hours per week or 80 hours per week and you'll still make the same amount of money, 
you know, a lot of people will just work five hours per week because they'll say, I don't care. I, they're going to give me my, my rice and my, you know, my, my stuff if I work or if I don't work. And so there's a lack of incentive. There's a lack of motivation to work. And when that happens, the economy can stagnate. Um, I really like the use of that word. Stagnation is the noun. It means it's it doesn't move a lot. It's kind of. Like but is, if in the country is equality, then the result that people all people work uh, eight hours. Uh, all people, not uh, someone work five hours, someone ten hours. All people work uh, eight hours. All people uh, have uh, the portion of rice and it's equality. Yeah, I think I guess I should have given a better example. What I what I meant is let's say let's say I'm working for a company um, and I'm working in sales. So my job is to sell um, to sell phones. I'm supposed to sell phones to people. And so my my job is to convince people to buy phones to make money for my company. But if I have no performance-based pay, if I just know that no matter what happens, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the same amount of money, I might be less motivated to sell very many phones. I might not work as hard to sell as many phones as possible because I know that I'm going to make the same amount of money anyways. So this is why a lot of companies provide performance bonuses or commissions because they want people to work harder to be motivated to be more productive. And so, yeah, and so when uh, types in the chat, it's about productivity. So I, I, shouldn't have given, I shouldn't have given the example of hours. What I meant was sort of effective hours of working in the sense that you're doing something for the economy. But if you work in the yeah. company, if oh. you work in the country where the uh, economy is planned, and uh, like a sales, as a sales representative, you cannot, uh, you can to not put effort in this uh, job because uh, it's one sales phone, uh, one uh, cell phone will be one model and people will be determined to buy from you from your um, uh, store and only this uh, product because no concurrency on the market yeah, yeah, I understand what when people when 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 you control what you what you do your job, you can do that. You can uh, you can work the time you want, but when you, for example, work uh, in a co in a company from a private co no, uh, public company uh, uh, controlled by the government or a company that they, it makes you uh, work eight hours uh, every day. Yeah. But uh, may I continue with the question? I think if in, if we have a big government uh, that it it inside all the social um, situation, there are a lot of red tape. There are a lot of bureaucracy and also a lack of uh, a lack of incentive, a lack of motivation in the people. I think um, you have. Many security, social security, insurance. A lot. Uh, you have. You could have a lot of good education. But if the government, the state, is so bigger as as is in many countries, there is a lot of problem. There is a lot of death, and all the private sector is working for the state, for the bureaucracy, and for the red tape. Good. Okay. Okay, so these are these are really good points. Is that government programs can involve a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of red tape. When we say red tape, we mean annoying things you have to do to get stuff done. And so, if the government controls everything, sometimes mm -hmm. everything just gets bogged down in bureaucracy and nothing happens. Um, okay, so I want to move on to talking about the other extreme that I was talking about. So we've talked about government controlling the economy. Let's talk about government leaving the economy alone. So what if? The government didn't provide any services or any products, and they just completely left private companies to provide products and services. What are the advantages, the good things about that system? What's good about private corporations controlling everything? Um, uh, excuse me, I want to start that. Um, uh, I think that uh, the the good thing is that you have a better quality service uh, on that. Uh, when, when when government gives uh, something to the private companies, 
uh, private companies are are it's a business, and you know, and they gotta they gotta find more clients, and and if they have a um, uh, a lot of demand, uh, they have to give the best service so they can so clients can go to to their company. Um, it's like uh, I don't know. Uh, it's like a hospital, uh, a government hospital or a private hospital. Uh, private hospitals, are, we know, are much better than the government. In in uh, in some cases, in I, I think the most cases, they are are better. Uh, the only point, uh, like as I said, is that uh, uh, the private companies will have the the earnings for that only for them. I I think that. Okay, good. That was a really good analysis. So competition leads to better quality and, as Igor says, lower prices. So companies want to provide a good product or service at a low price so that people will get it from them. If I'm providing a bad service at a high price and the company next to me is giving a better deal, people are going to go to the company that's giving a better deal. So companies want to provide a good deal so they produce better products. Yeah, but um, yeah. that is the problem. It's 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 in capitalism, profit made through by exp, uh, exploitation. It's uh, the uh, companies make their price uh, low, to ex exploit uh, other sources. Look at the world in you know, globalization. We uh, boundaries we, we pass the boundaries because uh, labor and capital. If you look at the world, labor and capital flow freely between countries. It is not right. If you look capital income increase, labor income decrease, it means exploitation. Why is labor income is decreasing? Is it? I think we miss point uh, two words. I think is a capitalism means free market, but it doesn't mean fair market. The free doesn't mean fair. It's so is important. But capitalism, I, I I don't know, can tolerate democratic forms some ways, but not democratic sub substance. Capitalism requires that I think a small group of elites rule the society for their own welfare, for own their benefit, not for society, for in, for for people. Also, if you look at uh, capitalism, I think is another big issue. Uh, capitalism divides divides people into classes by creating creating in, in inequalities. Classes are also created in capitalism by some people owning the business and hire people others to be uh, like become their uh, weight slave you have no uh, way to escape you have to accept their uh, terms because there is no option for you then that's why you become a weight slave as you mentioned that is aids are working that's in some countries is acceptable but in some countries there is a law in eight hours but it's just a law. If you look at the uh, elder countries, they okay, you sign a contract, but they wait a uh, flexible hours to work. They make the eight hours ten or maybe twelve, maybe thirteen. Yeah. If yeah. you don't, if That's you right. don't more, if you don't work more than eight or nine, uh, they easily suck them, suck you. And also, uh, there are a lot of. Uh, it, both sides is really extreme in a capitalism and socialism, but I think some uh, government. I I can say this: a government really inter mix up the economy. In that point, sometimes I mean, economy needs restriction are uh, are placed and into market to prevent. The, I think to prevent cheating, lying, stealing, and manipulation. We need government in that point. That's law. That's law is going to help in that point to us to. Uh, to corruption in free markets. Okay, good. Thank you. You made a lot of points, so I wanna I wanna stop you so we can give other people a chance to participate. Let's let's go over quickly what you said. So so we're now moving on to the negative parts about capitalism, about corporate controlled economy. So as Wolf said, uh, free doesn't necessarily mean fair. So if you have a free market, that means companies can do what they want. Sometimes that ends up being unfair. Um, some because in a capitalist economy, some people have to make more money than other people. Business executives make more money than people who clean the floors. Um, you know, people, CEOs make more money than people who work at McDonald's. And that's just the nature of a, an economy that's run by private companies. And so you, that results in class inequality. People making 
and, and income inequality. People making different levels of income based on their jobs. Um, the other thing that Wolf said that I think is really important is um, benefit to society. Okay, um, let's let's say uh, well, so so corporations basically get to choose what products and services they provide. If I want to start a company, I can choose what uh, you know what what company I want to start. But what about the things that maybe might not be profitable, like education? What if, what if the government didn't provide education? And I tried to start a company that provided education, but nobody wanted to pay for education. People said, I don't have enough money for that. Well, now our society is growing up and kids are, don't have education because they don't want to pay for my service. Okay, so sometimes these social services don't get provided by private companies because they're not profitable. So they don't make enough money. And so this is an important role of government is sometimes that government needs to step in and provide those non-profitable social services. So mm. what I what I want to do now is I want to hear about we talked about the extreme of, of socialism or centrally planned economy and the extreme of capitalism or corporate economy. What do you guys think is the best solution in the middle? Like what what where between those two extremes do we need to find ourselves and why? I need it's necessarily a balance in this. Yeah, go on. Um, sorry, can may I add another disadvantage for the economy? The um, what can I say? Yes. The second, sure. the second one. Yeah, mm -hmm. is the crisis or recession. Um, do you know Karpner? He's a philosopher, and he explained very well when it comes to crisis and uh, recession in um. Uh, the market, um, market economy, or I'm not sure about the word. The, the idea is because uh, we we have uh, investors, we have companies, we have entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah, and they are the they are the ones who have capitals, who have uh, machinery, who have uh, factories, and we also have workers. So. Workers, they work, but they don't get paid uh, as they are they deserve to have. So the economy always produces more and more products, but in fact, the workers uh, they get paid, but they don't have enough money to buy all of those products. So the economy will not always in the um, in the um, uh, stage of uh, having too much products. Too much good, so yeah, that's that's the reason. Uh, like that's the cause of uh, crisis or recessions. Good. Okay, so I, I think that was a good explanation. Basically, if companies are producing products, but then they're not paying their employees enough to, people are not getting paid enough to purchase the products. That means that there's supply, but there's not enough money to have enough demand. So. Sometimes the economy can suffer if people don't have enough money to what we call consume. When we say consume in economics, it doesn't mean consume like eat or it means to buy things. When people don't have enough money, they don't consume. And consumption is good for the economy. We want people to consume because it means they're spending money and money is going through the economy. And so when people don't have enough money to consume, they, they stop buying things and the economy suffers. Um, okay, what, what other thoughts do you guys have? I also think people can control uh, the, the price of things, uh, the, the, the possibility uh, that people have to buy things uh, controls uh, how the offers uh, make the prices. So, uh, so it is necessary for uh, what I was saying, a balance uh, when the the pri the private uh, the the free market ca economy uh, makes a ad advance and, and production, but there are poor people that can't uh, buy all that things. Yeah, so that so that's the problem is is if we're producing a lot of products but people can't buy them. Yeah, basically because in the world, forty million people each year dead for. Uh, 
le food shortage, lack of, uh, I mean starvation. But I think in the world is a country produce enough food to feed everyone. The problem is jump into in that point in the capitalism such an unfair system of distribution to uh, resources. I I don't know because I think rich countries stealing resources from poor countries because like I said, uh, why is capital income increase, labor income de decreasing? It means the rich countries respect for just their, for uh, just uh, respect internal uh, laws in in their countries because if you look at international companies, they uh, export their resources to uh, third world countries to exploit uh, ch cheap labor income to make more profit. Good. Okay. So a big problem with the free market globally is cheap labor. Cheap labor is a is a I think it's a pretty big problem because here in the U.S. we can pay people in China or where whatever other country, um, we can pay people a lot less money to do the same job as someone in America. And so America is losing jobs and, and the people in China are not making as much money as they should be making for the job they're doing. And so within globalization, cheap labor is a problem because it means that the, the money is going to the wrong place and countries that don't have enough money are still not having enough resources because rich companies have those resources. Um, okay, so I, I like that. So there can be problems of distribution. That's a great point. Um, who else would like to share thoughts on this? Um, I, uh, excuse me. Um, I think that um, it will be like 50-50 uh, from the government and it will be good to have uh, private companies but I think that the government will have to to have more fiscalization. I know I, I don't know if the word is correct. Fiscalization. To uh, have like that's like a good. referee. That's that's yeah. a good idea. I think that's good when the uh, when the government uh, uh, how to say that uh, incent make an incentivation to to private companies and yeah. that incentivation for for them they to help uh, people who who uh, who don't have all the possibilities so that's yeah. a balance in between public and private i think it's they they might be uh, an agreement yeah because you know the 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 point i think is that uh, all people say rules are to break them but uh yeah it, it's, it's some cases are like that but uh, the most cases you need to that rules uh, put into action, and if you don't have referees or people that say no, that you, you gotta make this or 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 it's gonna be uh, a punishment for that. Uh, in most of the cases, private industry do as well as they as they want. Uh, they they cheat and they do things because government doesn't doesn't referee or doesn't fiscal. Don't have, don't have a fiscalization for them, and uh, if it will be like 50-50, uh, private companies will share their their product, and government will, fiscal, uh, will will do a good fiscalization. There will be an equal unequal unequal government. I think. Good. I like that. So the government sort of as a referee to make sure that companies don't abuse their responsibility yeah. and their power. Yeah. A really yeah, that's, good. A really sorry. good example of uh, corporate abuse is pollution. Sorry, um, government. Uh, so, sorry, sorry. Just one, one word. Okay. Government. Go ahead. Yeah, you say it's like a referee. Okay, we can see a lot of referee, especially in the football games. But it doesn't mean it's a crap. In the, if you look at the football games around the world today, is a much fixing problem is a big corruption. We uh, there are a lot of uh, corruption uh, in in the in some governments. You, oh yeah, that, yeah that's, a, that's another problem because you can't trust uh, government. The government make a corruption like a fix like in the football. In the football, uh, you can <laughs> uh, I mean trust the referee. It doesn't mean the referee always saying the truth because especially yeah. at the moment is you can easily bribe the referee like a government. A lot of bribe, bribe I don't know. You say a lot of corruption. I mean. That, yes, yeah, but that's where the the people enter, and people in enter have to say, "Hey, stop this! Uh, we're not we don't like this government. We like the other government because the other government has a better fiscalization." That's where when when people has to to raise their hand and say, "Hey, stop this!" 
So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great point, is that sometimes, you know, who can we trust? Because there are a lot of corrupt governments, even in democracies. And so it's yeah. definitely it's definitely worth making the point. I think for the sake of argument, I'm assuming that it's a non-corrupt government here that we're talking about. I'm assuming that the government does have the people's best interest in mind, so I'm assuming that it's a representative government. But, of course, when you have a potentially corrupt government, then you're looking at all kinds of other problems, and which makes the issue a lot more complex. But here, let's assume, okay, let's assume the government means well and is good and representative and not corrupt. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, about um, corporate social responsibility. So I mentioned pollution. Um, why, so when, it, when a company is producing, let's say, um, a power, they're producing, um, you know, uh, or maybe, let's say... Oil. Okay, yeah, so oil. So, so what if there is an oil spill and they, they mess up and they, they pollute the environment? Um, if there's no government regulation, what happens to that company? They are cheating so they are just making money and the farmers, I mean the fisher, the fishermen, they will not catch fish. Like, so, good, they so, will so, die and... so the companies have no incentive not to pollute. I mean, if they want to pollute, they can, they can do whatever they feel like doing, unless the government does something about it. And so and a really important role of governments is to prevent companies from polluting. Because when companies pollute, the company doesn't care, but the people care, and the fishermen care, and the farmers care, and the people who live near the power plants care. And so yeah. an, an example of, of government regulation of economy is preventing, is making laws about pollution and telling companies that they can't pollute um, and providing penalties so that companies don't pollute. So. Or maybe companies are, uh, will look for places where regulations is less enforced, enforced in order to make more money and to have profit and so on. That's a really good point and I'm so glad you said that because a, a good example of this is, is um, burning fossil fuels, is uh, CO2 emissions and climate change. So when we emit CO2 into the Earth's atmosphere, carbon dioxide, this carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, they spread out around the whole Earth. And so if one country has a problem with emissions, it affects all of the other countries in the world. And so the problem is we, need, we needed to come up with a plan for the whole world to pollute the atmosphere less. And that's hard because we had to get a lot of countries to agree to mm -hmm. reduce their emissions. And a lot of companies chose to go to countries or places where the regulations were less so that they could keep polluting. And that's why we needed to come up with a global plan and global regulations to lower CO2 emissions because if not, the companies would just go to the countries where there were no regulations. Um, so that's a really good example of why it's very complicated with pollution. It's complicated yeah, it's, to prevent Actually, it. it's not complicated because some people not really compromised uh, with the uh, ecosystem laws because these countries uh, I think uh, like uh, uh, choose the capitalism because it's a free market uh, in a free market is uh, these uh, countries is uh, I mean run by really powerful people they use uh, they like uh, in capitalism I say the white people in the classes the class also created in capitalism I mean uh, some elite people uh, really powerful than other individuals because some really rich people uh, really shape the politi politician and political terms in their own benefit because they are really powerful. If you look at the lobbies or some other corporation, they are really donate, uh, if you look at the United States election, big amount of money for election. Because why? Because uh, they uh, wait a lot of stuff to president or their uh, candidates because to protect their uh, benefits because why is a politician refuse to sign these contracts okay good so so this is a uh, another this is a, a, a related issue and this related issue is a uh, corporate lobby or corporations affecting the government so um, if I'm a company that pollutes a lot I create a lot of pollution I might go send a lot of representatives over to the government to try to persuade the government 
not to make regulations about pollution. Yeah, so first step. So yeah, sorry. One step, that one, another step is also cheating public opinion. How are you going to cheat public opinion? It's really a ridiculous example I want to give you. Uh, always, I know, is for instance, electric companies that encourage you to protect uh, environment and go green by signing for pa pa paperless building. But on the other, other hand, they continue operating old, outdated carbon bleaching burning power plant. Did you understand what I'm saying? Yes, we have an expression for it in English. It's uh, cheating. It's, it's called, well, it's cheating, but specifically that we call it greenwashing. So greenwashing is when companies put put an image out to the public that they're environmentally friendly. They say, we're green, we're good, we're being good to the environment, and they cite certain reasons why they're being good for the environment, when really they have other reasons why they're being really bad for the environment. And so, um, so these corporations can sway public opinion through, through marketing campaigns by not, not necessarily lying, but not telling the whole truth. And so this is another way that companies can abuse their corporate responsibility and uh, not be the best thing for the economy. And as Huynh says, that doesn't happen in the centrally planned economy. Um, you don't have corporate lobby. You don't have governments, I mean, you don't have companies going to the government and trying to convince the government about anything. And so that is, that's another advantage of the centrally planned economy. But again, you need to have a good government to operate a centrally planned economy. So um, what, what else do you guys think? What thoughts do you have? I think that uh, it all depends on uh, which company puts more money at the table. Uh, in these days, uh, unfortunately, money is all. Uh, there comes a, a company says, hey, I have $1 million. The other company says, I have $2 million. Okay, you got it. You do what you want. And and government tries to 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 let them do what, what they want. Until the 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 how you say the country the people of the country don't don't uh, how you say allegate uh, don't I don't know how to explain it in English but uh, they don't uh, reclaim the rights you know uh, oh yeah you can say uh, the they you can say assert their right uh, assert their right. Assert, yeah, assert the assert the right. Um, uh, uh, here in uh, there was a case in the government when they have they're gonna make on one city a mega port, uh, a ship port. Uh, they they were gonna construct a mega a, a huge uh, mega port. And one uh, president uh, five years ago uh, buy some territories there, and he knew that they they were gonna construct their. Um, the, the that mega port and he bought like few, five years ago uh, a lot of territories and when they the government ha did had to reclaim those territory he sold them with a, a big price you know and, uh, and government uh, plays with that things no uh, I think that yeah yeah so it, it can get it can get complicated with government and and how they choose to, to build stuff and what they choose to do with it. And uh, I think that's a good mm -hmm. point as well. All right. What else do you guys think? You said education and uh, other stuff. Healthcare really important. Sometimes governments and avoid uh, to invest these issues. But on the other end, governments really invest really big amount of money in military budgets. That's also interesting. Why? Because education is important, healthcare is also important. And the governments, why avoid to invest this kind of things, but they continue to waste huge amount of military budget, invest the military budget. Okay, so your point is sometimes the government, even when the government is supposed to be giving money to the country, sometimes the, even the government doesn't choose the right things to spend it on. Yeah. Yeah. I think so because in the United States, it's a healthcare is really big issue in these days. But a lot of people and government avoid to uh, uh, invest the healthcare. But uh, but government is uh, still invest a big amount of money in the uh, military budget. If government cut the military budget, then they can spend the money for education and healthcare. 
Yeah, well, that's <laughs> that's that's a uh, that's the liberal view in the U.S., but the conservatives don't agree with that, unfortunately. So that's uh, that's not happening for us anytime soon. No, I wish, not liberal, I, I wish, I'm not I wish it would. Just uh, not, I'm not liberal and democrat in just saying. I think it's. I mean, I don't know. It's like a common sense because military doesn't really help the society welfare. But if you, I mean, uh, put the uh, education in a healthcare in a good condition, I think help the society welfare. I mean. I mean, I, 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 I agree with you, but I'm, I'm a liberal American, and you'd be surprised by how conservative a lot of people are in our country and who don't agree with you, who think that military is extremely important and that military is more important than other things. So, again, sometimes the government disagrees about what to spend money on. Sometimes the people disagree on what to spend money on. So there's obviously no perfect solution. But I think, I think we all agree that both extremes have their problems, and it's important for the government to step in for stuff that's really important, to, to provide social services, to make sure that companies aren't abusing their responsibility, to make sure that money is going places where it needs to go. And so it's important for the government to be present in the economy, but maybe not necessarily to do everything, because private corporations get a lot of really good things done. I love the example of private hospitals. Private hospitals provide better medical care than public hospitals. Um, Oftentimes, uh, governments choose to have private corporations run their public transportation. That's another good example. Um, sometimes a private company can do a better job running public transportation than the government can do directly. Um, so we can private all use each other's expertise to do a better job. A private hospital, I think, is not seems moral because if you have money, you can continue your life. If, if you don't have money, go, uh, people leave you to die. Well, that's a whole that's a, that's a whole other big issue, which is unfortunately a problem for, I mean, f for medical care in general, is that someone has to pay for it, and that's a I, I did I, I had one I had one verbling class about that uh, fairly recently, but I I might do more because that's that's sort of the field of stuff that I study, and that's a lot of other issues. Um, all right, so um, we're going to finish up for today. I hope that. Uh, I think you guys all got in some really good speaking practice, and I hope you learned some some good um, economic vocabulary. I've been typing stuff into the verbaling classes that hopefully um, you've been looking at, and if you don't understand any of it, ask me on my Facebook page, um, facebook.com slash Libby Verbling. And um, I, I'm not going to be around for the next couple of weeks. I'm going to be on vacation, um, but after I come back, I have a lot of class slots planned for you guys. So don't worry, I'll be back soon enough. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, okay. feel free to share suggestions on my Facebook page. I love feedback, I love suggestions for class topics or whatever you guys want. So um, I'll, I'll miss you guys and I'll see you when I come back oh, from the I'm missing you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was really Thank you so much. Here, can you put, Hello. can you tap your face? Uh, yeah, yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye, -bye. Facebook.com. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, hey, enjoy your vacations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I will. All right. Bye.